What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of corset 2013 Obviously a uh, few years old now, but uh, still a pretty fun set lots of awesome planeswalkers as always with these corsets uh, So hopefully we get something awesome here uh, Of course, we're gonna go through this as if it's a pack one pick one scenario So we'll do the best we can uh, to figure out what our first round draft pick uh, Would be if we were actually drafting this set as such, we will go through every card. So the first one here is Naturalize. Uh, instant for one and a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Very, very classic card. We have a lot of artifact and enchantment hate, especially uh, in green and white usually as well. Uh, and so this is really, really good for sideboard tech. It's not good necessarily main board unless you know you're going to be running into a lot of artifacts or enchantments. In a core set, that generally is not the case. You're going to be running into a lot of just creature decks, things like that. Uh, but of course, there are going to be instances where that comes up. And so you want to have access to this if you are in this color. But it's not a first round draft pick by any means. It's not something that you want to pick up early. It's something that you want to pick up later on and maybe just have one or two ready on the off chance that you actually need them. Uh, Chandra's Fury is an instant for four and a red. Just, uh, it deals four damage to target player and one damage to each creature that that player controls. This is a really interesting card. So uh, normally I'm not the biggest fan of just direct damage to the player uh, in draft. I'd rather have something that can deal damage over time but isn't just a one shot deal. That being said, uh, four damage to a player is nothing to shake a stick at. That's a lot of damage uh, straight off the bat at instant speed as well is pretty awesome. Dealing one damage to each creature that player controls is also just kind of a bonus. You're going to be able to hopefully pick off maybe one or two early game threats with this uh, and then maybe just team this with a little bit of a like big swing on the attack end and then maybe deal one extra damage to a creature, be able to pick that one off. Uh, really, really good in that regard especially because you can play this at instant speed that means you can play it second main during anybody's turn so you can use this on attacks or blocks which i really really like so i actually like this card it's very very efficient very lucrative uh and so for that reason definitely worth uh considering for a first round draft pick at least uh mind sculpt is a sorcery for one and a blue target opponent puts the top seven cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard uh, seven cards is a lot in draft. I just want to point that out. So uh, to put this in perspective, if you're not a big drafter, uh, you usually have a 40 card deck. You oftentimes will stick with a opening uh, an opening hand, excuse me, of seven cards, which puts you right down to 33 cards already. You chop seven off the top right away, which puts you down to what, 26, I want to say. I'm great at math. Uh, so you put the opponent down to 26 cards on turn two, which is pretty awesome. Uh, assuming obviously they also have to draw a card, so they're gonna be down even more. There's a lot that can go in with mill decks. Uh, if you get a lot of these, they're actually pretty good. Uh, that being said, it's a very all-in strategy. You really have to be into the mill deck to make it good. If you can't efficiently mill them out, they will just take over the game because all you've done is discard their, their deck and they're over here playing threats on board and they're gonna just be able to beat you that way. So very, very powerful card, but you really have to be all in with it. Uh, it is very efficient though on turn two, being able to do this is pretty nice. So I would rather have Chandra's Fury, uh, but on the off chance somebody would like something like this, I would definitely say there are instances where you could use it. Uh, since our Courser is a 3-3 vanilla creature for two and a green, this is just an on-curve okay card. It's definitely a filler card. This is a core set, so we're not looking for crazy powerful stuff uh, as we normally would in maybe a regular kind of draft set. But uh, this is perfectly fine. It's just a 3-3 for three. Not worth talking about really, uh, but if you're in green and you need a three drop, this is perfectly fine. Uh, Blade Tusk Boar is a 3-2 for 3 and a red with Intimidate, so it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. That means in a lot of instances this could be a 3-2 unblockable for 4. Uh, obviously not always, but it definitely, definitely narrows down the options for the opponent. That is actually pretty good. I like this on turn 4. Uh, it is going to die pretty easily with only 2 uh, toughness. It dies to a lot of burn, which is kind of bad but it can't be blocked by a lot of stuff. So ideally it's gonna have to be burn that kills this or obviously just a regular kill spell. 
Uh, so I like it. I think I would rather have the Fury over this. That might be incorrect. I don't know for sure, but uh, I definitely like Chandra's Fury better. Uh, Duress is a sorcery, very classic card for one black. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Uh, something important to note and limited, generally considered one of the more creature heavy formats, less so on the instance and sorcery side of things, uh, or even for that matter, artifacts or enchantments, because this also technically hits those. Um, not necessarily the best card to pick. Uh, Duress is okay as, again, a sideboard option. There are going to be decks that are going to be more spells heavy versus creatures. You'll want Duress in that matchup because you'll want to be able to efficiently remove a card before they can even use it. However, uh, a lot of times you're going to miss on this if you run this main board, and so I would argue this is probably not worth it uh, right off the bat, but definitely worth it as a sideboard option. Uh, Welkin Turn is a 2-1 for 1 and a blue. It does have flying, and it can block only creatures with flying. That's actually not a big downside with this, uh, and so for a 2-1 for 2 with flying is actually a really good on-curve kind of 2-drop. Uh, being able to evasively swing in for 2 is great. Uh, only being able to block creatures with flying kind of sucks, because ideally you'll be able to trade this off with something on the ground, but uh, you won't be able to, unfortunately, with this card just because it can't do it. So. Uh, it's fine. I like it. Uh, I'd rather have the Fury. It's a more powerful card in my opinion. Uh, but in a blue white Flyers deck, this is a very, very good two drop. It's just going to be able to evasively get in there for some damage. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Vastwood Gorger is a five, six for five in a green vanilla creature creature. Excuse me again. Uh, is perfectly fine as a finisher for a green deck. It's not super exciting. It's a six drop little under uh, statted for a six drop, but really, again, in a core set, we're not looking for anything too crazy. We just want a finisher. Uh, and so this will do the job. It's a perfectly fine card. I'd rather have the Fury again because there's more places where that's going to be good versus this. This is very good for closing out a game. Not good in any early game sense because you're just not going to be able to play it. Uh, and then a lot of times if you're in a losing situation, this doesn't actually get you very far unless that board state is just a ton of little guys and you need to be able to kind of efficiently block or deal with some of their creatures. Uh, obviously that's dependent on the matchup, but I'd much rather have the Fury where it's going to be a little more lucrative. Uh, that instant speed is huge on that card, so definitely would rather have that. Uh, Vile Rebirth is an instant for one black. Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Worth noting that this is instant speed for only one mana as well. Uh, and it's a creature card from any graveyard. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own. So you can exile something from your opponents, which is worth noting as well. Uh, and it is just a 2-2 two -two for one, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, it's perfectly fine. It can be a surprise blocker as well, which is pretty awesome. I don't like it as much as the Fury still, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, but uh, these are actually okay cards. You really, obviously you need a creature card in the graveyard to make it good, so it's not going to be a turn one play most of the time, but it is an efficient way to get a 2-2 out onto the battlefield. In the early stages of the game, it's perfectly fine. Uh, Canyon Minotaur is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a red vanilla creature. Not a huge fan of this. Uh, it's a little understated as we saw with the Courser. 3-3 three, three for 3 is where we kind of want to be. 3-3 uh, three, three for 4, a little bit slow. Uh, so this is just generally speaking not a card I'm into. If you really need a playable, it's fine, but it's not great. Uh, Angelic Benediction is our first uncommon. It is an enchantment for 3 and a white. It has Exalted, so whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Uh, and then whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you can tap target creature. This is a very powerful card. It does a lot of awesome things. However, generally speaking, you're not going to be attacking with only one creature. Uh, you do get to tap down one of theirs if you do so, and it gets a little bit of a boost, but uh, that generally speaking isn't bad. I don't want to be relying on only one creature. Uh, to be honest. And so while this is definitely a powerful card, it does a lot of stuff. On turn four, I think I'd rather be playing a different threat uh, than building up only a single creature. So for that reason, not super interested in that. Uh, Gem of uh, Becoming, excuse me, as an artifact for three of any color. You can pay three of any color, tap it and sacrifice it. Search your library for an island card, a swamp card, and a mountain card. Reveal those and put them into your hand, and then you shuffle your library. Obviously, with those nickel bolus horns, this is very Grixis-focused. 
uh, do not like this card generally speaking unless you're in just some really crazy like mana intensive deck you'll probably want it there but other than that not worth it at all uh, really really bad in my opinion <coughs> excuse me uh, fungal sprouting is a sorcery for three and a green put x one one green sapperling creature tokens onto the battlefield where x is the greatest power among creatures that you control this can be very very good but you do need some strong creatures to do it uh, that being said this is probably good enough that i would pick it over chandra's fury this does put you pretty hard in green where you need a lot of those high power cards but for four mana if you can get four or five one ones out of it it's more than worth it uh, you're spreading that damage out you're doing a lot of cool stuff uh, to fill your board up and then be able to swing in for just tons of damage. So I actually kind of like this. The Chandra's Fury obviously actually deals with this card very, very well. Uh, but I think I would rather have this because it is long-term board presence, things like that. So definitely a strong one. And then our rare here is Mutilate. So it's a sorcery for two and two black. All creatures get minus one, minus one until the end of the turn for each swamp you control. Obviously, that's going to be a good bit, uh, at least two, uh, if you're casting this card. Uh, and so every creature is going to get a huge, huge uh, downswing, probably killing most of them. This is, I would consider, a board sweeper for sure. Uh, I actually like this card. I don't like it as much as the Sprouting. That might be incorrect just because this is such a powerful card. Uh, but I'd rather be able to pro up uh, or to to boost up my own board uh, rather than just kind of dealing with the board. A lot of times you're going to be playing a lot of creatures as well. A card like this could be dead in your hand if you don't have uh, or if you excuse me, if you do have just a lot of creatures out because you don't want to kill your own by any means. Uh, and so if you're taking this, you're kind of saying I need to be in a more spells heavy deck, which is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. I prefer to go a little bit more on the creature end in draft, uh, and we do not have a foil, so I think Fungal Sprouting is my pick. That could be very wrong. There's actually a couple picks in here that I would consider as round one picks, but that's definitely the one that I would say is it. So uh, feel free to disagree in the comment section below, but if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.